Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the tactical class and going over uh, how to actually play and how to best benefit your team playing the tactical class. Uh, this is going to be a first video of a series of videos I'm going to be doing dedicated to the Space Marine class. Uh, I'm going to be going through each uh, class we have uh, and just giving my feedback on how to play it best and hopefully it will give you uh, some new information that will probably help you uh, play the game a bit better and help your team a bit better because that's what we need at the moment on the Space Marine community. We all need to come together and help each other a bit more since we've got a lot of new people coming into the community and they don't really know how to play the classes or get the best out of the classes. So this guide is going to be going into that and hopefully it will help you all out. Okay, let's first go over and discuss what actually is a tactical class. Now the tactical marine in Eternal Crusade for the Space Marine side is the main uh, asset on the battlefield in my opinion uh, we we are the only class well it sorry it is the only class that can actually take points uh, from the enemy uh, I know other races have uh, two types of classes which can take stuff uh, for, for example on the chaos side the mark of Nurgle ground assault or sorry the actual ground assault class can take uh, uh, points whereas our ground assault cannot take points so they have two classes uh, uh, which is an advantage to them that can take points where for us we only have the tactical class that can actually take points so it's vital that the people who are playing tacticals know their role on the battlefield because they're the only ones that can actually assault the points and take the points from the enemy it's in our advantage to make sure that our team is stacked with mostly tacticals obviously we should have devastators apothecaries uh, ground assaults and jump assaults but in our role as Space Marines playing the Space Marine faction, we need the majority of our team to play tacticals because that's where we're going to get our points from. We, on on maps where we're defend, uh, sorry, when when we're attacking, the team should be made out of mostly tacticals because we are the assault. We are the, we are the assault Marines on the point which are going to take the point which are going to do m the most damage to the team. Uh, the faster you get control of the points, the faster the team dies. So it's vital that the bulk of the team is made up of tacticals on uh, attacking uh, type of missions. Now let's jump in and let's actually look at the uh, overview of the actual tactical class. I'm going to go through the primary weapons, the armor, the war gear, consumable, grenade, sidearm, melee weapons, the standard and all the, all the stuff in between. So let's jump in and let's first start with uh, one of the most important things is the armor you wear. Now when you uh, start to upgrade your class um, as a tactical you want to be going for a loadout which doesn't favor just one stat uh, in, in particular say for example you, you don't want to go with full-on health because then your toughness suffers you have to have a balance in my opinion of certain kinds of aspects in certain kinds of classes now as a tactical I like to have a uh, in-between of everything so as you can see here on my trinkets I uh, mix it up with uh, let me just go to edit here I mix it up with health trinkets as you can see here and uh, armor stabilizers which give me armor again another health trinket and another armor trinket now as you can see here now I have an equal amount of armor and health given from these trinkets, which for me is good because you need health and armor on the battlefield. If you if you if you negate one of them, then you you gotta have a tough time uh, moving around and dealing with enemies on the battlefield. So you have to have a healthy balance of stats as a tactical. Again, this is very important playing as a tactical because you are the assault on the point. People. People playing tacticals are one of the most important players on the battlefield. It's you that are going to be taking points from the enemy. It's you that's going to be capping the points from the enemy. And it's you that's going to be assisting the team with your uh, weapons, which we're going to be getting into in a bit. So let's jump in and let's look at the armor. Now for me, this is, again, this is, this is my complete personal opinion. But for me, I do not bother with the relic armor. Uh, for me, the artificer armor does the job. As you can see here, the power armor just has 100, uh, 100, uh, 100 armor the regen, the delay and the toughness rating whereas the uh, artificer armor for the, for the extra points you're getting it's not a big jump but it's worth it again with the relic armor for the points that cost on top of the artificer armor I really don't think that's wor uh, worth it when you need a lot of the points to balance out your class uh, buying modifications for your guns uh, and for your uh, melee weapons and stuff like that so if you're going to be playing tactical class, I recommend just going with Artificer Armor for now. If if you want to make a veteran 
uh, uh, tactical then it's probably best you maybe equip it with the relic armor because you've got the points value to spend on it then but for now I really do suggest just going with the artificer armor now let's jump in and let's look at some of the uh, consumables, uh, the grenades and the standard of the Space Marine class. Let's first start with the consumable. Now as a tactical you can get four consumables, sorry, three consumables. You can get the uh, ammunition pack, you can get the double ammunition uh, bundle and you can get the first aid pack as well. Now for me, I normally go with the ammo pack for the simple fact that when I played the game, I play in a dedicated group of players. I am uh, the chapter master of Vigila Mortis, in case nobody knows. So when I actually play, I play with my chapter members on the battlefield. That means that when I play with them, we have people who are individually given assignments on in the squad. So we have a dedicated apothecary, dedicated devastator, de dedicated jump assault, ground assault, etc., etc. So I rarely need healing. Uh, since I have an apothecary following the squad around all the time with the simple fact that uh, you've got the heal grenade now from the apothecary side of things he can throw that heal grenade down and you can just run into that and just get health and go back into the fight now another aspect is that when we do these squads we make sure that people have different consumables not to benefit themselves but to benefit each other as well so for example if my friend is playing a devastator and he's holding down a door and he is running out of ammunition uh, I don't want him to. I, I don't want that chap to leave the door because he's putting down fire and he's stopping the enemy from coming. As soon as he goes back to an ammo crate to get some health, the enemy starts breaking through. So I can easily run to him, give him some ammunition from my consumable, and it keeps him in the fight. It keeps the enemy back and it keeps the pressure on the enemy. It's stuff like this that people really need to start thinking of when it comes to the battlefield. You know, you need to be keeping the fight moving forward as uh, squads and as individuals as well. So it's always important that you think about consumables as not as a benefit to yourself, but as a benefit to people around you as well. So another important factor uh, uh, about tactical is bringing the right grenades to the uh, field of battle. Now for me, personally, I only bring the melter bomb and I recommend everyone else just brings a melter bomb for the simple fact that you, you can control the flow of armor on the battlefield. It takes two melter bombs to a rear of a truck, tank, anything, any anything armor two melter bombs to the rear of it will destroy it if you have a, a team dedicated like i do who go out and uh, hunt these uh, tanks uh, you, can, you, you can control the enemy armor fast and efficiently very very fast and efficiently with melter bombs and melter guns and all and all the other kinds of anti-weapons uh, anti for uh, tanks now it's important that you control the armor on the battlefield because it's the armor that brings the enemy to the points now for example if we're fighting orcs and there's a ton of orc trucks uh, appearing at points if you can take those orc trucks down and then take the players who came down from the orc trucks out that means you've stopped a huge advance uh, on that point but not only on that point on the whole battlefield itself because now the trucks themselves are at a, a despawn timer I think it's 200 seconds where you can't spawn another truck for, so for them 200 seconds the enemy orc team has to slug it on foot now that's where you're at advantage now because mostly on these uh, uh, points is that you are you have the defense uh, high ground you have uh, you know the, the orcs have to jump through windows they have to go up uh, hills and stuff like that so you have the advantage then of just picking them off while they're running and while they are running it's wasting time down on the clock so if you're defending points if you're defending an ABC point say for Ontarius and you take down all their armor then that means they have to spawn at their spawn and actually run up to the points which gives you time then to start uh, putting more defense on the points uh, you can also start picking them off at range with your plasma cannons, las cannons, stalker balls and stuff like that it really becomes a slog then for the enemy team to actually get to your point which then just burns keeps burning keeps burning down time and for the simple fact that then you can start pushing up your armor to their spawn areas so you you, you can then control the flow of infantry on the battlefield since they've got no armor to counter your armor so it's very important that you take down their armor fast and one of the best ways to do this is with a melter bomb so i'd recommend that everyone who wants to play tactical take the melter bomb it is a fantastic piece of kit and it will do the job uh, well and it will do it quick and you'll see the benefits from it straight away i guarantee that you'll see benefits from it straight away now the next thing is mainly for people who want to be squad leaders and it is the standard now myself i always play squad leader so i uh, i know how to lead a squad i know the best methods to lead squad to lead players uh, obviously i'm not going to go into that which way to uh, lead, uh, best way to lead a squad. I'll probably make another video about that another time. But picking the right standard uh, for the squad you're leading uh, is probably one of the most important things you can do as a squad leader. Now, 
as my tactical, I'm a ranged person. The, uh, when I play tactical, I'm normally in a squad of people that is made up of range as well. Now, for that, I take the standard of blasting. And as you can see here, the range damage multiplier is a, as an 8% e uh, increase. So if you've got squads of uh, devastators, uh, other tacticals, las cannons, you know, plasma, plasma cannons, or ev everything range, you're adding an 8% increase to their damage mul uh, multiplier, which, <laughs> when you think about it, is a fantastic stat to have. You know, if you're defending, say, Harkus, and uh, you're a tactical on the wall, uh, uh, and you have this uh, ranged damage multiplier, and you have more or less a full squad of last cannons up on the wall, and you and you have this uh, buff on all them people around you with the last cannons, you can do a tremendous amount of damage onto tanks, vindicators, uh, rhinos, and stuff like that. So it's vital that you use the banners uh, correctly on the classes that you're playing. For example, if I, if I was playing ground assault, I would use the ground assault uh, uh, banner for Mila. Uh, I know I've done videos on that. If you want to go and see the Templar video I did, where I actually have the ground assault. Uh, standard on my back and it's it shows how effective it is when you use the correct standards so make sure when you are a squad leader and you're leading you're leading the squad you know what your squad is made up of and you select the right standard to uh lead that squad with because if you don't then it can have some negative effects on you leading that squad okay now what we're going to do we're going to uh, jump in and we're going to look at the actual uh, weapons you can take as a tactical now this is not going to be a in-depth guide of uh, all the stats on the weapons and stuff like that this, this is basically just a general overview of uh, what weapons you have as a tactical and what they're best used for in uh, the situations that arise in eternal crusade Okay, let's first look at the actual bolt guns for tactical. Now, as you can see here, I have a number of bolt guns. I have the venerable bolt gun, which you get for the pre-order bonus. I have the normal bolt gun you start with. I have a skin for the normal bolt gun you get from a box. You have the master crafted bolt gun. You have the quick silver pattern bolt gun. You have the stalker bolter. You have the phobus pattern bolt gun, which you uh, buy from the dev store, which they don't do anymore. I don't know if they're bringing that back, but for now it's not in the store and you have the uh, stern guard bolter and on top of that you have the storm bolter as well so let's jump in and let's just go over uh, the actual uh, st not stats but the actual what each bolter is normally used for in certain situations so let's start with the actual uh, normal bolter you get uh, as the first gun as uh, a tactical now the actual bolt gun itself for me is a general all-purpose round weapon. It's good in close quarter, com uh, close quarter combat, it's good at medium range, and it's good at far range, but it's not the best it, uh, it, in those ranges. It's good, but it's not the best you can get at those ranges. So for me, who plays tactical, I like taking the bolt gun because, you know, it, it can help in any situation that arises. If you're uh, coming across uh, people who are a melee and they're having an effect on you, it can still do damage to them, but it's not the very best at doing damage to them. If you're dealing with people at long range, again, it can do damage to them at long range, but it's not the best at doing damage at them at long range, but you can still put a fire down on the target and still make them back down, and sometimes you can even get a kill at long range. So it all depends on your play style. Now, for people who like playing the close quarter combat, uh, going into points, breaching, defending points, then I would not suggest you use the bolt gun. I would suggest you use the storm bolter. Now, the storm bolter itself is an uh, an assault weapon in the law, so it can put down a, a huge amount of fire. As you can see here, the fire rate is 416. So, with this gun, you can put down a huge amount of fire. So, for if you're having trouble against uh, melee targets uh, with the Eldar Warlocks, the Eldar Banshees, the Chaos Ground... Uh, uh, ground assaults, the uh, jump assaults, stuff like that. People who are really being a pain to you uh, at close quarter combat, then I would suggest you start loading yourself out with the Storm Bowler because the Storm Bowler can be very effective against these classes. Like I said before, it can put down a huge amount of fire down onto a target and it can absolutely obliterate them if you get the practice and precision right with it. So it's a very, very good weapon in close quarter combat. Now, for those people who enjoy the long-range warfare, you know, sniping people uh, and still putting down a lot of fire down onto a target, then I would recommend taking the Stalker Bottler. Now, the Stalker Bottler 
is basically just a bolt up but modified. That's that's all it is. It's got the uh, stalker bolt clip onto it, so you've got single shot uh, bolters coming out, which do more damage. Uh, you've got the long barrel, which gives you increased accuracy, and also of course you've got the scope. Now the stalker bolt is a very very deadly weapon if used right. Now to use the stalker bolt right obviously you need to be at the advantage of being at range, you need to be at the advantage of taking targets down from a range away from the actual battle. Now you don't want to be going into a room and breaching into a room with the stalker bolt because you're gonna, probably going to have a bad time trying to uh, do that. You know you've got to be one of uh, taking the bolt or the storm bolt from them kind of effects. So if you're one of these people that enjoy the range combat then definitely take the uh, stalker bolt. Uh, I think if you, I think it's three shots to the upper, uh, the mid slash upper torso, definitely the head area. Uh, you instantly get kills with people. So if, you know, if you practice with this gun and uh, you you get the targeting right, you know, you get very experienced with it. This gun can be very deadly uh, in the right hands. So yeah, for people who enjoy the long range warfare, this is your weapon you should be using at all times. Now there's another variant. Of the, the of the long range bolt gun in the, the the Space Marine Arsenal, and that is the Stern Guard Bolter. Now it hasn't got the range as the Stalker Bolter, but it's got the the scope and what it compensates from the the range is that it can put down more fire down onto the target so as you can see here it's got the drum magazine so you're taking away the uh, range aspect of it and you're replacing it with uh, more firepower so this so this uh, this this actual weapon the stern guard bowler is more used for the medium kind of uh, sniping range so for example if you're holding say uh, the wall on Harkus and the enemy are below that wall at Harkus uh, they're not in the distance they're below the wall this was this is probably the gun you should be taking because again you've got the scope on it and you've got the firepower to start putting a lot of bullets down onto a target and even making them go away from the wall retreating or just killing them so there's two variants of the range uh, warfare in my opinion which is the stern guard bowler and the stalker bowler so the next gun we're going to discuss is the plasma gun now as you can see here i've got four variants of plasma gun i've got the just a normal plasma gun uh you can get the plasma gun that comes from a box the plasma gun that you can get with uh your road trader points the apollo pattern and also one another one from a box which is the master crafted plasma gun again i'm not going to go into the stats i'm just going to talk about the actual guns themselves now for someone who who is uh playing a plasma gun or you think about playing plasma gun one of the things that benefits uh, you playing as a plasma gun tactical marine is that you're very effective against ground and armor targets now you're not going to be super effective against uh, armor targets like a last cannon or uh, someone with a melter gun or something like that but if you see a, some armor that's got a uh, you know it's very low on HP a couple of charge shots may be uh, the thing that can push it over and actually destroy that vehicle so you can just help your team out um, what I mainly use it for when I actually play with the plasma gun is that it has two fire modes it has a charge effect and it's a rapid fire effect so what I tend to do I tend to use the charge effect to shoot into uh, melee targets who are either coming for me or are dealing with other targets and nine times out of ten it will stun them uh, sometimes it will even kill them if you're lucky enough that they're actually low on HP so you can stun them very fast uh, with a charge shot and then you can switch over your fire mode and then put a, a burst of a plasma burst onto them which was is very good at uh, taking down their armor uh, all plasma weapons in the game are very very good at taking away the player's armor so if you can take away their armor uh, and you've already got that charge shot on them as well you know they the target will go down quite fast and yeah it's very uh, beneficial for them, from them kind of uh, si uh, situations again it's all about your play style if 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 you're someone who enjoys the all-round type of play like you 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 want to help out taking down armor and you want to be a benefit to your team uh, helping them out uh, in uh, taking down with infantry then I'd definitely say take the uh, plasma class when when I come to do my squads when I actually go in, uh, in game I always like to have someone with a plasma gun just for the simple fact that it, it, it can control uh, uh, ground assaults and uh, jump assaults and stuff like that with its stuns and it can also help out uh, going against armor as well so it is very beneficial to have one of these uh, if you're doing a big squad in game now the last weapon we're going to discuss is the melter gun. Now the melter gun is vital for taking down armored targets. Now if you're one of these kind of players who love tank hunting, love taking down the enemy's armor and just wrecking all their stuff, then the melter gun is a must. Now the melter bomb and the melter gun 
is one of the most powerful combinations in the game in my opinion. If you have a Melter Bomb and a Melter Gun you can easily take down tanks solo on your own. All you need to do is put the Melter Bomb to the rear of the vehicle. That will take the vehicle down to half health every time. The, the rear of the vehicles is where you need to be putting the Melter Bomb and also where you need to be shooting the vehicle as well with your Melter Gun. The side and front have different armor uh, stats than the rear so you always need to be going for the rear of the vehicles when you're using these kind of weapons so it, when you put the melt bomb on it like I said it takes it down to half health now from one one burst from the rear uh, with with this gun should more or less have this vehicle on fire and more or less destroyed uh, so yeah <laughs> if you're playing this class you need to be focused just solely focused on looking for armor I, I see people going around burning people and stuff like that which is you know I'm not saying don't do it but it's not really where you're going to have the advantage of playing this class if you're playing a melter gun then you need to be just constantly going around looking for enemy armor that's your sole purpose on the battlefield is to go around and look for enemy armor I know it can put a dot effect on uh, targets and stuff like that which is always welcome but let other classes deal with that your job is to go around look for the armor destroy it because you are the pinnacle of destroying armor for, for the tactical marines you can easily take down armor and uh, once you can like it like I said once you can control that flow of armor on the battlefield the game is yours the game is yours so you play a super important role in taking down the enemy f uh, vehicles and stopping the flow of reinforcements onto the battlefield now of course when you have weapons you also have modifications for those weapons uh, so for example, I've got my primary weapon here, which is a bolt gun. Now as you can see, I've got attachments. I've got the drum magazine, I've got the uh, barrel, and I've got the grip. So let's jump in and let's see what these modifications you can get. Now, of course, I haven't lock unlocked all the modifications for all the weapons, so I'm just going to go over my uh, bolt gun and give you a general outline of the modifications. Now, first off, this is the barrel. Now for me, what I find, and my gameplay, again in my opinion, I like playing with the extended barrel. I like to range my enemies. As a, as a tactical bolt gun, I'm, I, I really don't want to get into uh, the, the melee aspect of the game. Because I'm 9 times out of 10, I'm going to lose because I'm not a melee, uh, a melee orientated character. So what I do, I try to be as effective as much as I can at range. So for this, I take the extended barrel. Now the longer barrel, that, it, it, as you can see here, it increases the range for bolt guns. So I can be more, of, more effective at range uh, with my class at bringing down the enemy before they get to me in the melee situation. So if I can kill them before they get to me, then that is good in my eyes. Okay. Uh, of course, you've got other ones here reduces the recoil uh, for the bolt guns again reduces the vertical recoil this one improves accuracy at the expense of ver uh, vertical recoil again I don't really have a problem with uh, recoil with my game because I, I've got this uh, gaming mouse this rat 7 and I can actually can control the the DPI and stuff so I don't really have that kind of problem with uh, recoil uh, myself so I go with the uh, increases uh, the range uh, actual barrel now let's jump in and look at the uh, grips. Now the grips themselves, we have three uh, uh, variants of grips. We have the reduces the shot recoil for bolt guns. We have increased accuracy while on the move for bolt guns, and we have the reduced uh, spread increase per shot for bolt guns. Now for me, I like to take the stabilizing grip for, for the simple fact that when I fight on the battlefield, I'm always constantly moving forward. I it it it's rarely that I. That I stop and uh, in place myself in a defense position. I know I'm probably the worst imperial fist in the world, but I always like to keep the f the the battle of the flow moving. I do not stop. So for me, the stabilizing grip is very important because I'm constantly moving with my gun. I'm constantly firing and moving. I'm constantly firing and advancing with my uh, weapon. So the uh, stabilizing grip gives me the advantage then because it uh, decreases. Uh, the, the spread of my shots by 50%, which is a great stat if you think 50% of, uh, of, of, of your uh, shots is, is being decreased when you're constantly moving. So I can fire, I can advance and fire on targets, and I know that uh, most of my shots are actually hitting on the target. So I'm constantly pressing the enemy, I'm constantly putting fire on the enemy, and I'm constantly doing damage to the enemy. So I'm constantly, you know, 
bringing the pit into the areas and pushing onto points and stuff like that, which is very, very useful when you're playing tactical because, again, it goes back to the first point right, we stated is that the tacticals are the main assault class as you're the, you, you are assaulting the points to take the points from the enemy. So you need to put that efficient firepower down onto the enemy so uh, you can do the most damage, you can clear them from the points. Now, to clear them from the points, it goes back to the clips as well now. I, I started with the box magazine because uh, this is one of the first magazines you get from the 1k boxes uh, so I, got, I think I got this on my second 1k box which was great so this gives uh, I think it gives it 40 a 40 round uh, magazine for bolt guns the stalk around is basically just a stalker clip it, it it gives out high damage but a low rate of fire so I wouldn't really suggest taking that if you're going to be advancing onto points and clearing rooms and stuff that's not the way you want to go uh, either the box magazine or the drum magazine now in my opinion I go with the drum magazine because it is <laughs> it can basically put uh, I think it's a 60 round clip so I can constantly go into a room shoot uh, kill a lot of guys and still have rounds left in the uh, actually in the magazine without reloading because one of the one of one, one of the situations that arises when you don't have an efficient uh, magazine uh, clip is that when you're reloading and someone comes onto the point you're more or less dead because you're reloading you've got nothing to attack them with because it's so close range and the melee and stuff so if you have a drum magazine you have more firepower uh, uh, in your arsenal to use and you can just keep moving and then you can reload at a time of safety and stuff like that so I do recommend taking the drum magazine if you uh, if you've got to go with a bolt I actually recommend if you're someone like me who likes to advance onto points putting as much fire uh, power down uh, uh, in an accurate uh, manner and constantly moving then I suggest taking the extended barrel the stabilizing grip and the drum magazine Okay, let's go on to the uh, secondary weapons that you can have as a tactical. Now, let's start with the uh, pistols. Now, for me, um, I'm a huge fan of the plasma pistols. I normally, well, I rarely ever take a pla uh, actual bolt pistol at all when I uh, deploy as a tactical. For the simple fact that, going back to what we said about the uh, plasma, uh, sort of the actual plasma guns, is that as a plasma pistol, you have two options. Again, you can do a charge shot and you can do a rapid fire shot. So what I tend to do if I run out of ammo or I, I'm reloading my uh, gun and an enemy uh, jumps on me, uh, I pull out my uh, plasma pistol, I do a charge shot to try and stun him, then I can either do a heavy attack with my melee knife or I can uh, do a rapid fire shot then with the uh, plasma pistol and take him down. So you do have a lot of variation when you take the plasma pistol over the bolt guns. Now I know the bolt guns have some advantages like some of them do have like lock-ons where you can actually lock on and fire as auto aim and stuff like that which I'm not really a fan of to be fair. I don't really like auto aims in uh, any with any kind of ranged weapon so I don't really take that just for principle to be fair but but some of them like the uh, mercury pattern bolt gun have a, a, a huge fire rate like you can see here 666 uh, fire rate so you can put down a lot of fire onto the target but again it's all down to per personal preference for me I'd, I, I would recommend taking the plasma pistol because you can stun the enemy and then you can either do a melee attack on him or put more shots into him with the plasma pistol so yeah you, you do have a variation of attacks when you do take the plasma pistol over the bolt gun and finally, we are at the melee weapons for the tactical. Now, as a melee weapon, you get a combat knife. Now, looking at the combat knives, all all the stats that are the same, apart from the Freist Blessed Knife, which gives you a penetration stat of 110. The rest are all ATA. Now, for me, I... I don't really use my combat knife as much as I use my range weapons. So the points wise, I don't really want to waste points on a, a weapon that I hardly ever use and which to be fair is not going to be very uh, beneficial to me against other melee targets. Nine times out of ten, if you're going against a Mark of Nurgle or a Jump Assault, you know, you're always going to be at a disadvantage because that's where their power lies. They are melee orientated units. You are not a melee orientated unit. So there's really no point in investing a huge amount of points into a combat knife uh, when you hardly ever got to use it and it's not really beneficial for your class it's it it can come in handy in certain situations but uh, my personal opinion I would say just take the normal stats uh, knives and uh, if you really want to uh, add some character to them 
then you can uh, add the upgrade of the enhancement as you can see here I have got the increased penetration enhancement for this knife uh, you can also take uh, the increased uh, the sulfuric acid etching which increases damage for the knife but for now I basically just take the normal uh, crusader knife I more or less went for it for its looks I think I love like the bronze like metallic kind of blade it's got on the glow to it uh, and yeah I took the upgrade to it so if it did come to it then I can can do a bit of damage but you know my, my damage is not in the knife itself my damage is coming from my gun uh, for my guns and my uh, sidearms uh, and my uh, grenades and stuff like that for my class so I hope you've enjoyed this video chaps I know this is a well I'm hoping this is going to be the first video of a series I'm going to do dedicated towards the classes for the Space Marines if you've got any feedback at all uh, any uh, any opinions uh, any suggestions anything that's better than actually my classes uh, sorry anything that works better than what I've got here now please post below in the comment section because I'd love to hear it I'd love to discuss it uh, we as a Space Marine community really need to come together we really need to discuss uh, what's best for us and we really need to get people working together because we actually are getting beaten a lot from the Hawks, uh, Eldar and uh, Chaos Space Marines at the moment so we need to come together as a com uh, community and we need to all help each other out so I'm hoping this video will help out the new players and some old players as well in case you're struggling with what class to take and stuff like that so I hope it really helps you out I thank you for watching the video uh, get it, like I said again if you've got any feedback please leave it I would love to hear back from you so thanks for watching chaps and have a good day thank you bye bye